I'm Evan O'Calley and I'm here in Dublin and I'm on my way to meet one of the all-time greats of Irish cooking, Wade Murphy. that the only good thing to ever come out of Wexford was strawberry, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've done all right. Same as the Intercontinental for the night. Ah, oh, yeah, look at it. Um, business is good. Ah, no, business is good. The well, well, reason I'm here is because of the Young Chef, but uh, um, the Young Chef competition yesterday, but this is my old stomping ground, actually. This is, really, yeah? I came back to this building to open this as the Four Seasons Dublin in uh, 2001, yeah. um, after about seven, eight years in London. Um, and that was kind of the first time I came back cooking at a, at a kind of a, a serious level in Ireland yeah, after, yeah. after leaving. So this place has a lot of great memories for me and yeah. it kind of kicked me off. And the people that I worked here with, uh, I'm still in touch with them and stuff like that. A lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a, so this place, yeah, it's very, 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 very special place in my heart for, for yeah. this place, you know, Fast. this area. Um, I want to I wanna, uh, go right back to the beginning. That's what I want to uh -huh. start with. And, um, a very very long time ago yeah <laughs> um, was, was there a moment kind of in in your early uh, early childhood or, or whenever was there ever a moment where you kind of felt a, a connection for food we oh you know, yeah is... look it's 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 no secret um, my grandmother was a local cook in in Gorey in County right. Wexford where I'm from she oh, cooked oh, for the oh, she cooked for the Christian brothers and um, she cooked for uh, Gory Rugby Club as well. Um, she used to do the meals for them on a on a on a Sunday for the home teams and the home games. Right. Okay. Um, and so, as a young fella, even I, I like my earliest memories are peeling spuds into our big enamel okay, sink yeah, yeah, yeah. for the big pot of Irish stew for the rugby players. You know. <laughs> um, but it was always even back then. I probably did her head in, you know, because I was like, "What's this, Nana? What's that, Nana? Why are you yeah, doing yeah, this, yeah, Nana?" Yeah. You know. But yeah. I, I don't, you know, I never wanted to be anything else yeah, it's yeah. as simple as wow, that you know okay, yeah. i did all my study i did my leaving i had a good leaving but yeah. i always just wanted to cook and chef i just loved it you know? yeah yeah and uh when where did the kind of the uh where did you start your career uh, back your in gory um right. as a young 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 kid i got a part-time job in marlfield house and in the core town hotel and mm. you know the usual old old story of starting yeah. off in pot wash yeah, pot yeah, wa yeah. Uh, scrubbing right. pots and stuff like that and then the chef would get you in helping with desserts and starters and and i, I loved it yeah and and so even even now the, the court town hotel is no longer there but i love going back and seeing the bow family in marfield house and yeah. you know they yeah so that, that that was that was it and just to get pocket money you know yeah, <laughs> i started yeah, yeah. off but yeah. and it was my granny actually who got me the job in marfield house as well because really, she yeah. knew them yeah, yeah so so it was a good starting place you know my yeah. place a, a relay chateau hotel just really, outside yeah? wexford you know wow. outside my hometown so yeah. so that's where it all kind of started professionally and uh, uh, the head chef there told me i was it was time to apply to college and stuff like that and i was thinking of doing the chefing course and he said look at do the hotel management course and then you can always keep chefing if you want you right, know okay and i did and i did the first two years of uh, hotel management in called brew street and after second year i was like this college stuff is not for me you know okay and i just wanted to work i just wanted to work in yeah, kitchens yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, um so with that i just packed my bags and went to london after second well, year in college and the the, the rest is history yeah yeah <laughs> i think the industry was a lot different back then than, than this yeah now. i think so yeah yeah it was tougher yeah. I'd, I'd definitely say that there was um there was a lot of here's you know like i i've young chefs that come and, and work with me and 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 we have our little our little black book of recipes yeah and i say bring in your notepad yeah you know you keep it in your ass pocket yeah, yeah. write down the recipes that you right. need like and there's no secrets when That's, i started off yeah, yeah you couldn't do that you couldn't do that like right. there was no passing on recipe and a chef the head chef would be afraid to give you his recipe in case you did it better than him okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, there was that kind of an attitude and that's all gone now and it's a, there's a lot of sharing a lot of sharing of information you know down to social media twitter yeah um uh, uh instagram all that kind of crack and you know each chefs are following one another and seeing what they're doing yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know i can you know like even say mike mikey from the greenhouse yeah if you see something that mikey did or whatever and you ring him up and go how did you do that he'd tell you straight really, out yeah. Wow. yeah he'd tell you straight out how he yeah. did it you know yeah. and, 
and that's what I like about the industry. So that side of things, yes, it's it's very different. And, go, and going back to what I was saying about the, the attitude and the toughness in kitchens, the shouting and roaring, that's, a lot of that has stopped, thankfully. Like, we get a lot of comments about it because our kitchen in, in 1826 is an open kitchen. Okay. And uh, so people are like, it's so quiet in there. Yeah. And, that, and it's, you right, know. Yeah, it has to be, yeah we're, we're, <laughs> we're just, we're calling orders. We're yeah. talking to one another. Yeah. And there's no shouting and roaring at one another, you know. There's but like, um, is there? Because I know I work in professional kitchens. I know, uh, you know, sometimes uh, there are there is high pressure. There is yeah, pressure. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you've, it's got to be. Is there ever a case in your kitchens where you know there would be, or is it is it acceptable, like in your head, where you can shout or you, you know? No, like how, look at how PC do we get in kitchens? Yeah, you know what I mean. Look at you. You can. You can. You can paper it up whatever way you yeah. want. Look, at sometimes things happen. Yeah. It is a stressful industry. Mm. But as I say to guys, like, if I, like, there's no belittling people. There's a difference between giving somebody yeah, okay. a bollock and for doing something wrong yeah, 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 yeah. than belittling I, somebody I agree, I agree, in, yeah. in, you know, yeah. correct, make the correction. If you don't like what I've said to you, you know, about do this again, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It all depends on how you say it to the person. Yeah, yeah, of course. If you don't like it, then we'll talk to each other after service and... It's no problem, but the, the key is, if somebody does something wrong, don't belittle them for, the, okay. for it in right. front of her. And yeah, that's yeah, a big yeah. thing, like. Right. And um, the, the fact is that there's a chef shortage yes. in Ireland, and maybe even outside of Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any kind of any views of why that is? Because people are blaming the long hours, the hard work, the belittlement or whatever. That seems to be the root cause of the problem. Do you I think? think that's just taking the easy way out of right. blaming that. Like, you know, it's... Um, Yes, there is a chef shortage. Yes, as I said, there's no glamour. There's too much glamorization of our industry. It is a tough industry. Yeah. It is hard. Um, it is hard. But like, but look at if you love what you do, yeah. you don't mind doing that. I think it's just there's a certain thing as well that there's a lot more restaurants and food okay, outlets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whether you want to call them restaurants or whatever, yeah. but there's a lot more food production. Yeah. going on in this country than there was 20 years ago okay right yeah. a lot more restaurants a right. lot more hotels a lot more like and from i don't know what the figures are but maybe there's i think they're saying that less people are going into the industry yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah you know you don't, you don't need to be a genius to work that out that if yeah, you yeah. know there's more places that needs people to cook and there's less yeah, people yeah. that are going into it you're going to have a shortage you know but yeah. uh I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the golden answer okay. to yeah. what, how to fix that. You know, it's just, you know, you get when you get people into your into your establishment, and you get people like I always say, people don't work for me; they work with me. Okay, yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. and that and it's a, t a team effort. So when you do get staff in, you just need to look after them. You just, yeah. you know. What do you think? Kind of are the key <laughs> qualities of of being a good chef? You know, would leadership be in there? Would my management be oh, in there? Oh, of course. Yeah. Like you know, you're you're. You're, you're with a team. You're you're leading a team, or you're part of a team, and you just yeah, man, people management or people skills. I say, I'd say that's why I most the most the biggest reason mm. I moved to America when I did in 2005 yeah. was it wasn't just to learn about the cooking side of things. Like, yeah, it was. I, I worked for Four Seasons Hotel, a great great company at the time. They were one of the top, the top five star company. And their their management teaching and their management programs were second to none. Okay, really? But I wanted to go to America where you really need to know how to be PC and you really need to yeah, know yeah, how yeah, to how to manage your staff and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's why and I went. Team as well. Yeah, I went there to learn that, and I I learned quite a bit about it. But it's you know I'm not going writing any management books or anything okay, like that. Okay, you know, yeah. it's it's just you just have to respect people. Okay. It's all about respect, respecting yeah. your staff, respecting everybody you work with and everybody that you work along with front of house back of house whatever it is you know yeah. it's like even i remember one day uh, it was a kind of a little thing happened in the kitchen and one of the guys was going to fall out oh this is about four or five years ago going yeah. to fall out with the kitchen porter and i said okay. Do you know who's the most important person in this kitchen yeah. it's not me right. it's not you it's that guy there i said yeah you know and it, and it is yeah, yeah. you know and when you think well, people probably people, look down and, yeah think that, but, yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's kind of the attitude you have to have. Everybody is part of that important wheel Fast. to keep it going. You know, everybody's an important cog, and there's no bigger cog. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you worked in uh, you were saying Four Seasons, and you worked in hotels. Yeah. Largely in, in your career, you kind of worked in hotels. Am I right? Or? Well, it was a, it's a mix. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, earlier on, it was like a few hotels in Wexford. Then it was yeah. all restaurants, and then kind of uh, 
the, the latter part was hotels, like I was four seasons. And then in 2007, I came back and opened up what is now the, the lodge at Ashford. Yeah, okay. It was this Lockery Lodge back then when yeah. we opened it. Then I was in Dunbeg for a little while and then five and a half years ago, myself and Elaine opened 1826, so yeah. And was it, that was, uh, uh, Oh, jeez. <laughs> nearly gone. <laughs> uh, uh, those green bins are off. Yeah, I blame the Norwegian <laughs> embassy, yeah. Um, where were we? Yeah, uh, 1826 there. Yeah. Um, opening that. That, that was uh, p- probably like most chefs, a dream to open up your own restaurant. Yeah, it always was. Like, when myself and Elaine met and ended up getting married, Elaine was, Elaine was um, GM of several hotels right. and... She's worked in the industry as long as I have and, yeah. you know, travelled Australia, Germany, everything like that. So it was kind of a, a no-brainer when we got together that, you know, eventually we'd have our own yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Front of house, chef, the two most expensive jobs in the yeah, restaurant yeah. already sorted, you know, if you were to pay yeah. for it. Um, so, yeah, it was a no-brainer. It was something we always wanted to do. And um, we had looked, we had looked and looked, you know, for a few years. And yeah. it was always about the property and the area and everything like that. And... Uh, eventually we got a phone call about the, the property in Adair and it was um, a no-brainer, you know, and Elaine is from that area. So, okay, uh, yeah, right, I'm yeah. originally from Wexford, but yeah. Elaine is from that area and like we, when we, we, we met in Chicago, but uh, so it was no-brainer. So, yes, that's five and a half years ago. Part of well, me feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other parts of me feel like it was a lifetime <laughs> ago, you know. What we wanted to do, it wasn't, it wasn't rocket science, you know. We just wanted to serve, uh, you know, good food, um, you know, yeah. Oh, I kind of, I, I, I robbed the tagline that uh, for for what we do, from one of our regulars. Uh, they, 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 she was telling me about. Oh, my friends always ask me about here and what the food is like. And she says, I tell them that it's elegant comfort food. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's kind of it's food. What I like wanted always wanted to do was cook food there yeah. that people want to eat. Yeah. Not have to be told how to eat. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's it's just my version of, of of not comfort food. Like, but while it's a nice little attached cottage and cozy yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff when when the when the food comes out I, I kind of we, we what we wanted was people to kind of go oh wow well, I wasn't expecting that okay you yeah, know yeah, yeah. that the, like guess, we have yeah. we, if we don't we if we don't make it we don't serve it okay so right. everything is made in house yeah. you know breads everything and so it's it's that like it's a lot of work but it's 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 what myself and Elaine want to do well initially we're kind of going oh let's open a restaurant really casual yeah, yeah. and then we'll you know sit back and take it easy but yeah the two of us wouldn't be happy with that. Right, okay. Yeah, you yeah. know, so you know I mean? eventually it developed and, and things changed. But the, the philosophy is still being the same, you know. Right, and uh, your food is, uh, would it be right in saying that it's kind of uh, more classic, classical based y- then maybe? Yeah, modern. well, we use, we do use a, a, a few modern techniques yeah. and stuff, but not too much. Um, but it would be, my, my grounding would be classical. Yeah, yeah, my ground, uh, it would be. Uh, what, what do you think about uh, kind of modern cooking and uh, Nordic cuisine and you know all that kind of this kind of new age of cooking look at uh, I've nothing against anything just yeah. because just because I don't do it or I just don't, just because I don't you know talk about it or whatever doesn't mean or may, I might it might not even like it that yeah. doesn't mean it's wrong okay yeah, you know yeah. what I mean yeah. that's but um you know there's there's always the topic in Nordic cuisine mm. it's not for me yeah you know right. but it's not it's not that it's wrong yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, not right, for me yeah. you know yeah. um, well, I can see how, how other people like it and stuff like that, but, you know, it's, it, I, I don't think it's a fad because it's been around for long enough now, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, not a, it's not something that's just cool now. Yeah. And, but I, I think, because what they did in, in, in the whole Nordic food movement and everything is phenomenal, like what they created. Course, so. yeah. But to me, it's all, you know, the old classics, yeah. butter sauces and all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of crack. But, and there'll always be modernization of techniques and stuff like that. Yeah, but, you even know. within French cuisine, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't give me, don't give me uh, hollandaise in a siphon gun. Like, you know? <laughs> a lot of young chefs nowadays uh, would have the recipe for uh, hollandaise in a siphon. You yeah, know? or they'd be, able, that, that they'd be able to tell you for how long and what <laughs> temperature to water bath something, but they can't make a, a beurre blanc, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It, or they can't make a proper fish stock. Yeah. Is, that, is that not a kind of worry? That, that does worry me, the yeah. The yeah, yeah. doing the modern cooking. Or, I do you think I, a young chef should, should kind of go towards the classic route? Like, the, the, these modern techniques and these mm-hmm. modern have come from somewhere. Yeah. They didn't just happen. So, to me... The best advice is learn learn the learn the, the, the classical basics yeah, first yeah. and then move on. Learn how to make a good beef stock, learn right. how to make a good fish stock, yeah. learn how to fillet fish, learn how to 
you know, make a beurre blanc, make your mother sauces, you yeah, know. Yeah. And then if you want to start modernizing it, yeah, do like do some tests and yeah. see if it works. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm interested in kind of because uh, I know you clearly love Irish food. Uh, where do you think Irish food is at in the whole? Because you're a well-traveled man as well. Yeah. And uh, where, where do you think Irish food sits at? It's getting there. It is getting there. You know, there's huge, huge uh, steps have been made by the likes of Food on the Edge, bringing all these people you know because we had a horrible reputation out there for food really, yeah? you know Irish, Irish food even when I moved to America even, and when the U- even in the UK yeah. um, we had a horrible res- re- uh, reputation for food we always had a great reputation for produce okay you know our yeah. produce has always been up there and has always been known as some of the best in the world right. but it's in the last 15 20 years but like I want to mention uh, Ross Lewis and the likes of those guys and Kevin Thornton and all coming back to Ireland yeah. you know and they find, and then this we, we actually as a, as a nation and as an industry we started to treat that produce with the respect okay, yeah. it deserved yeah. and cooked it properly and yeah. didn't boil everything in the same yeah. pot and you know that kind of way um, but so, so it is getting there and as I said with the likes of food on the edge and, and all that kind of stuff it's 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 improving the image but there's still there's still work to be done and there's still yeah. there's still a good few a good bit more of getting behind what we do you okay. know as an industry and coming together and right. and and you know supporting like i said what I, uh, earlier on about techniques and stuff just because i don't agree or i don't like something yeah. doesn't mean it's wrong yeah okay. you know i'm sure all the nordic guys don't like each other's food yeah. but they all have this movement that you know whoa big puddle here <laughs> <You're wrong. laughs> but yeah go back to what I was saying it's like like the Nordic guys they had this 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 movement this support network yeah. where they all supported one another and, and we need to get a little bit more of that going on in Ireland and and you know it's getting there our yeah. food is phenomenal as, as I said our produce is phenomenal look at the restaurants that we have now the likes of the greenhouse Gibos you know chapter one which is you know yeah. been there and but then the newer ones that are coming through as well like you know the three stars that Cork just got there recently yeah, you know phenomenal incredible. phenomenal guys phenomenal restaurants they've all worked extremely hard to get yeah. to where they're getting you know uh, Miyazaki and, and all those guys and Ahmed and Muse and and Robbie uh, you know but and even in the last few years you look at how many more how many more bibs we've got and stuff like that yeah. you're always going to have controversy with the starting with michelin you yeah, know of course, yeah. you're always going to have critics saying oh i think such and such should get one yeah, and yeah. i think yeah. you know nobody knows except michelin right. you know and what uh, I'm, I'm interested to hear your views on, on michelin um i it's funny i you know we, we 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 set the bib as kind of our holy grail when we first opened. Yeah. You know, we, we were we were hoping to get one within a few years yeah. of, of opening because to me the bib thing is is the big thing. After after working in the industry for so long, yeah. the bib thing was was the big one because they give it to you for, for good cooking at good value. Which is kind of Which the, is which yeah, was yeah. the market we right, okay. pushed because we needed to have a busy restaurant. Yeah. There's no point, you know. We're yeah, not, we're, course, yeah. yeah we're, we don't have a backer. We're not opening yeah. a seven-seater with 14 yeah, yeah, chefs yeah. and we're doing, you know, whatever amount of people. Yeah, like, yeah. we needed to, to be busy, to, to you know, because we invested our life savings in the restaurant. So the bib, you know, was, was kind of our holy grail. Yeah. Um, I think it's quite funny because you'll always hear, you'll always hear chefs in the industry slagging off Michelin and, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. stuff like that. But I think deep down, every chef in the country yeah craves their recognition yeah, okay. in some kind right. of way yeah, yeah. Well, while they're saying oh I don't want this or I don't want that or you know deep down they're, look, yeah. they're craving their recognition yeah. they, they it, slag it off 364 days a year but when it's the, the day before mission yeah. everybody's every chef the, is looking at it yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah looking at the live stream you know and, and how they work no, but only they know you know yeah. I, I respect them uh, as I say sometimes you, you don't understand what their decisions are uh, what happens but look at that's 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 their job it's not my job yeah and it's my um, job just to cook you know yeah and i suppose uh the next level up from the bib is a mission star no no no, no we're, we're, we're no <laughs> <laughs> you know where i'm going already <laughs> is that not is that not like i look at the likes of wild honey in yeah. An incredible restaurant where I worked. Yeah, and yeah. I, I would kind of, I always kind of thought Wild Honey Inn and, and a, uh, your restaurant are quite similar. Is that is that an, is that not an ambition or even a possibility? I, I don't think so. No. 
I don't think so. Okay. Number one, I don't think we're at that level. Right. You know, to, 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 to gain a star. I, I don't think so. And, no, and as I said earlier on, the, the, <coughs> the bib was our holy grail. That was what we, we, we benchmarked as what we wanted to achieve and the recognition we wanted, you know, yeah. to, to, from, from Michelin. But, uh, I, I, you know, look at I'd never say never, but yeah, I'm yeah. not, I'm not, it's not. You're not getting nervous the, no, the night no, before? No, 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 I wouldn't, Hi. I wouldn't even <coughs> think about it, to be honest. Okay. I'm nervous the night before about just keeping the bib. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah always, yeah, wow. every year. I don't think this, <laughs> wow. <coughs> um, I'm so. sitting there watching the stream and I'm re <laughs> I'm refreshing the Michelin the, the Michelin website yeah. going well, have we kept it have we yeah, kept yeah. it you know so what advice would you give to a young kind of ambitious chef uh, that wants to one day kind of be where you are and own his own restaurant or whatever I'd say like like I said earlier on like keep your head down act like yeah. a sponge um, get as much information as you can but don't don't if you are planning on opening a, a, a restaurant be realistic about what you're going to open right okay do you know what i mean yeah you know you need to make money yeah you need to be able to pay wages you need to be able to pay your suppliers you need to be, you know so be realistic about what you want to open yeah um, the best advice like i i could give a young a young chef or anybody that wants to get into the industry if you can do it without the two b's do it and the two b's are borrowing and, and a backer right okay yeah, yeah. you know and okay. that's what and i, and I got that's that from elaine and she said really, when we yeah. open our own restaurant yeah we're doing it without a without borrowing okay. and without a backer yeah. and if you can do that that's that's the best advice i can give anybody okay. you know because if you with, with borrowing you've already got a noose around your neck and then you have to kit out the place you've got everything yeah, like that, yeah, you know? yeah. so, so if you can do it and don't don't rush it either like i i, I thought i'd be have my own restaurant by the time I was 30. That yeah. was my dream. But yeah, you know, yeah. it, was, it was late 30s, near early 40s when I had my own restaurant, you know, and it, it's worked out because I was more mature. Yeah. You know, so okay. that's the best advice I could give anybody. Right. Okay, you're, you're back to the old gaff. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll call it a day, but thanks a million ways. Not at all. Real pleasure, pleasure to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, you too. Yeah, take care. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. No worries.